everyone, this is Cindy and thanks for joining me in my Dare to Be Artsy studio. And I want to send a thank you to Scrapbook Expo for putting on another virtual event. This one is Dies to Die For and I, it's got to be my favorite because Dare to Be Artsy has some amazing dies. This is one of our newest. This will make really wonderful slimline cards and it comes with so many pieces. So I love this little card that I did and it's made with our penguin stamp set. Let me show you some more things. We have a really great backpack die. It is not too early to start thinking about Christmas and what a great way to package a Christmas gift. It comes with a little spot for a gift card. Let's see what's inside. You can put all kinds of things in here. It does fit standard A2 size cards. This one uses our wavy square dies. And this has got to be one of my favorites. It's the Wacky Box die. And look how cute this shaker card is. And then we have this card. And we're going to demonstrate this one later on how we make this one with our rectangle framelits. And another really fun gift idea is to create a little candy bag with a really unique topper. So this die is our Swirls and Stripes die, and it really creates a fun gift bag. Then we have this little fun wine topper, but for this event, we've got um, reindeer food. So this one is our fun reindeer gift tag. So we have so much more to show you, and let's get started. We're starting with our bear shaker card. We're using the fancy framelits and the rectangle fun fold dies. This fun fold makes it easy to create a flip card. The papers are from the Snow Much Fun paper collection. And we're using our Skeezins Greetings stamp set, which has some really great sentiments on it. Here's the dies that match our stamp set. What's also great is that these dies are also going to cut the bears right out of the bear paper. This gives you lots of flexibility. To create the base of the card, we're using a standard A2 size card base. We're going to score it at 2 and an eighth by 4 and a quarter. Then we're going to take our fun fold. It has score lines on the edges, and we're going to line those up around against the fold. And we're putting the bump of the frame facing into the center of the card. We're going to tape it into position. And you really want to make sure that it's centered, top and bottom. Then you're going to take that and run it through your machine. Now you're going to take two more pieces and you're going to cut them to four inches by five and a quarter. This little snowflake one we're going to cut in half so it's two inches wide. So you're going to have two separate panels. And then you're going to take one of the panels and we're going to position it on the left side and just hold it into position right now. You're going to take the fun fold and line it up so you want to line it up so it matches the part that you already cut out of the red paper. So see the little ends? We just got to make sure that's lined up really good and go ahead and tape it down. Then you're going to run that through your machine and cut that out. So you can just throw away the little piece. Then you're going to take this section and you're going to tape it down to the very far left panel. So that's going to line up. You want to make sure that the um, top and bottom line up centered. So now you've created this great little window. The second piece you're going to tuck in underneath the flap. So on the back you can see where it's cut and that just covers up that hole. Just make sure when you're putting your tape down that you don't do it all over that snowflake paper. You want you don't want it to show through the other side. So you're just taping it around the window. Then you're just going to tuck it into place. 
and then you're going to take your other piece of paper and put that on the other side. This paper is the Wooly Winter paper, and I love the plaid on the back as well. So you can choose either side, but this is the one we're using. Just tape that down, and now you can see how the card is coming together. It creates that great little spot for the shaker. So now you're going to take this teal snowflake, and you have a piece of acetate, and you have the teal square. You're going to line them right on top of each other, and then cut them both out at the same time. So I'm just going to tape that down, run it through the machine, and then we're going to end up with two separate pieces. Now you just want to take the teal snowflake. You're going to take the next smaller size die and center that on top of the teal snowflake paper. Tape it down so you have it nice and centered. Run that through your machine. Now you're going to have a little window or a little frame, and then you're going to glue that to the acetate. This is the top of the shaker card. So you're just going to use some liquid glue, and I'm just using my art glitter glue, just going around the edge. So we're going to just flip this over and put it on the acetate. And I just think the art glitter glue works best for this part of the of gluing it together. And I love these fancy framelits. You're going to find that you're using them a lot. On the back, I'm going to put foam tape. I'm just going to cut the foam tape really thin. I just want to make sure you can't see it from the other side. And for the shaker card to really work well, I'm going to go ahead and put a second layer of foam tape on top of the first layer. When I made this card the first time, I just had one layer, and this foam tape's pretty thin, so the little pieces didn't shake very well. I wanted more space um, so that the pieces would shake a little bit better. So again, I'm just, I cut the foam tape pretty thin. I want to make sure you don't see it from the other side. And because you're going to be putting little pieces of sequins in there, you really want to make sure that you that the foam tape um, touches each other all the way around. Like you don't want any holes because you don't want any of the sequins to be falling out. So I'm just piecing all of these this these pieces of foam tape together. Make sure there's no holes. Then I'm going to sprinkle in the little sequins. And we're using Carnival Candy sequins, which is really cute. It's got the little peppermints. I think it's perfect for this card. I stamped this little piece, Skisons Greetings, and put the little snowflakes on there. So I think it's easier to, to have the sequins down, face down. Just line it up. Make sure it's secured. Test it. Looks great. It shakes so much better because we made that deeper. Now we're going to attach it to the base of the card. When we cut our original base, we use a fun fold facing, the bump was facing towards the center of the card. This one, the fun fold, when we cut it, faces outside the card. So if we attach it to this one, it's going to flip and you won't see the shaker when you open the card. So by doing the fun fold facing towards the center, when we attach the shaker card, you're going to be able to see the shaker th even when you open the card. So I wanted you to be able to see it the whole time. So we're going to attach that. See when you open it, you're going to continue to see the shaker card when you open the card. Now it's time to embellish. So let's go ahead and use our bears. This one is right out of the paper. 
So you could use the dies and cut a bear out of the paper and use that. But I wanted to go ahead and stamp this one and color it in. And we're using the Skeezin's Greetings Bear. Now I'm going to put foam tape on the back of him. I'm going to keep all the foam tape close to the left side of the bear because his skis are actually going to cover the shaker card and we, pop, we popped up the shaker card so I don't want to put extra foam tape where it's going to overlap otherwise it would be sticking up too much. So at the top of the skis I leave the foam tape off. So this is just going to sit really nice on there. I love a lot of dimension on my cards. We're just going to put him in the corner. Now you open it up and you'll be able to see the bear and the shaker. Now we want to do something on the inside. Wishing you a very Merry Christmas is a sentiment I chose. Now on this card, the sentiment area is pretty small. So I needed a bigger area. So what we're going to do, we're still using our rectangle framelits. I'm going to put the white on the red base. These are the two different layers. Now, if I were to center this in the, on the inside of the card, you would see it when the card's closed. So I'm going to cut off one little side of it. I think this is going to look really cute. And I attached them ahead of time and just cut it so I didn't have to line it up after. I think that just keeps it um, a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to stamp it. I'm going to put some snowflakes in the back, wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Then when I open it up, I'm going to line it up towards the center fold. This way, it's kind of a unique look, and it's not going to show when the card is closed. So you just make sure it's centered. And press that down. So when the card's closed, you don't see it. Shakers work. You open it up, a great little sentiment. Now let's move on to the next hang tag. Great wine bottle tag. We're using our reindeer games. There's the dies that match. All of those little pieces are going to cut all the little ornaments out. And we're using our brand new wavy, um, wavy slimline framelits. I love this set. It's got lots of different pieces. They just came in. So we've just, um, they're going to be available soon. We're using one of the wavy edges and then one of the squared off edges. So we're going to cut the red paper. And then we're going to cut the little green and red snowflakes. That measures two and five eighths by seven and a fourth. And I want to cut just a little bit out of the center. So it's just two and a fourth. And the larger piece is four and three fourths deep because I want to create a score line between the two pieces. So, But um, I didn't cut it off just one edge because I wanted the little stitch to show. It's hard to see the little stitch in this video, but when you look close, there's a really nice stitched edge around the framelits. So I'm going to leave a little gap. and then I'm going to score it at two and three-fourths inches right down the middle. Then we're going to take our inside-outside circle dies. I'm just going to line that up, run it through the machine, and I've created a great little hole for the hang tag. And we've got the score line between the top and the bottom. So use the bone folder to give it a nice crease. And this paper again is the chocolate mousse paper from the Snow Much Fun collection. So now we're going to take our reindeer. I've colored them up with Copics. In the die set you have one skinny little banner. That's the one I used for this sentiment. I'm going to fold the outside edges to create some more dimension. Use foam tape in the middle. We're going to attach it to the tag with the little corners, the little ends tucked in. 
let's get blitzened is our little sentiment. Then there's our reindeer. So something to do that you can do that's a little fun is you take your reindeer and you stamp them a second time and you color the nose area and then we're going to just trim this off. Again I said I like to mention so this is going to make his little snout kind of stick out a little bit which I think it's I think it's really fun that way. So put foam tape behind it. And then we're just going to attach that to the top. So it really, really makes him pop. Now we're going to take the string and I'm going to tie one end to one side of the antler. I just think it's easier to start it off this way. And I'm going to keep this really loose. And once we attach it to the tag, um, you can secure it a little bit more with some more foam tape and glue. So, But I wanted it to look really loose to start with. Then all these little light bulbs have, um, have little tabs on them. The die allows those tabs to make it easier to attach your light bulbs to string and stuff. You can always cut them off, but I thought it was easier to make the die give you that option anyway. So I'm going to just slip it around the string, and then I can just glue it closed. This way I can just keep adding the little light bulbs to the string using my liquid glue and just attaching more light bulbs and again you're going to be able to secure it once we put it on the tag a little bit better. I put foam tape on the back of the reindeer and this is going to help the string stay in to in place as well. And remember when you're putting the reindeer on you want some of the antlers to hang over the edge so just make sure you don't put the tape up too high or up too close to the edge of the antlers. I'm going to tuck the base in behind the little banner and then once he's tucked in there you can continue to put the light bulbs on. You can use the foam tape. The, these are his little um, hoofs. So I'm attaching those on top of the banner. They kind of overlap a little bit so it looks like he's holding the banner. And I'm just using a little more of the foam tape. We're going to put use that behind the light bulbs. Attach some of them so they stand out as well. On the final one that I made I added glitter to the light bulbs. So here I'm putting the foam tape behind that little light bulb to, to position him on the tag. In the stamp set there are some ornaments as well so you could use a combination of the light bulbs and the ornaments. This one I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue behind that light bulb and then just glue it to one of the antlers. So again, this is where you can start um, attaching them, you know, securing them into position. So you can see how I did those. Again, we added a little bit of extra glitter to it. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed our tutorial. I just wanted to share two more cards with you using our reindeer stamp and dies. I also want to make sure that you know we have a discount going on until July 20th. So you're just going to use dies 15 and you're going to get 15% off on all your dies. Now have a great week and I dare you to be artsy.